needing to rekindle the passion in your relationship, our next guest may have the solution. Uh, Rabbi Shmuley Boteach's new book is called The Kosher Sutra, Eight Sacred Secrets of Reigniting Desire and Restoring Passion for Life. And the rabbi has consented to hang out with us for a little while. Rabbi's in the house. There you go. <laughs> you know, the last time I remember that kind of euphoria like you had with the Jonas Brothers was the iPhone right outside your studio at yeah. the Apple Store. And I noticed right. that, that they both have two things in common. The purity rings, you could not get the iPhone, the unavailability of it all. It makes something deeply erotic. When you can't satiate your desire, that actually fires the passion of desire. Uh, conversely, forbiddenness, when something's forbidden, a bit off limits. Remember the way Steve Jobs, he will not release any information about his products before they come out. So Gotta have it. speculate. Right. Well, yes. what's forbidden so, about your spouse? Yeah, he or she is there every day. Ah, so that's right. the thing. I mean, what, look at what we've done to sex in America. We've done the exact opposite. It's always available. Sex is always available. Marriage is sex on tap. You're supposed to have forbidden zones. I'll give you an example. Wives are not supposed to traipse around the bedroom completely naked. By doing that, you demagnetize the body. I think husbands body. would disagree with that <laughs> yeah. statement. Well, you know, those are the same husbands who, uh, rather than fondling their wives' assets every night are playing with the remote. So, you know, we, we really want to change it around a bit. Look, even here's, the, here's the thing, though, because they were, the guy we had on yesterday, he, was, he talks about writing this book, he's with the guys at the, at the playground talking about sex after, after pregnancy, and they all said, well, there isn't any. But the problem is there isn't any. It was, all of this stuff, the running around naked or, or who knows whatever else is, how do you get over the bridge to getting back to getting some. You know, by the way, <laughs> yeah, uh, this early in the morning, I don't know if we should have some, but there you go. look, uh, the way it works is after pregnancy, a lot of people stop having sex specifically because of the mental transformation. A lot of men have ceased seeing their wives as their lovers, and now they see them as the mothers of their children. Mm -hmm. My book basically says that sex is all about the mind. It's, bas oh, it's almost not about the body. When you go to a beach and you see a woman walking around a bi in a bikini, that's sexy, but it's not erotic. Here's proof. Mm -hmm. Most guys throw a frisbee or fall asleep. Not that, not that erotic. But if you peer into a woman bedroom when she leaves the, the blinds open now she's wearing the same amount of clothing you don't think to yourself darn anyone have a frisbee mm. something changed something something forbidden has mm. now been brought into the relationship we treat sex in America as a, an itch that needs to be scratched let's have sex in order to get it out of our system people treat it as a sedative women hate that one second their husband is saying I love you and he seems so alive he's electrified the next moment this guy is a dead corpse you're calling the undertaker <laughs> it's not supposed to be that way that's why you're supposed to have sex sometimes without Climax. You're supposed to actually build desire. We don't know how to do these things in America because sex is always about the instant gratification of the urge. Just like everything but, else. That's well, right, let exactly. Let me ask you this. You've been counseling couples with marital problems for how many years? About 20 years. And really, since I got married myself, yeah. And what's the biggest complaint you hear from couples when they come to you? By far the biggest complaint is we're falling out of love, we're drifting apart. That is the number one cause of divorce today. In other words, all these books that you read, that's why I called it the Kosher Sutra. You could read the Kama Sutra, you could read about 10,000 sexual positions, but that doesn't mean you have any desire to implement them in the first place. The loss of desire is the biggest problem we have today. One out of three American couples is entirely platonic. 40 million married Americans live without sex. Those who have sex have it once a week for seven minutes at a time. I mean, it takes longer to tell your girlfriend about it. We, we, so we're, you know, we really are losing our ability to connect. We think we're, th we're this overly sexualized society mm -hmm. when really our kids are, de are delivered these days by a store. So you got to get back that desire. And you say you can do it if you bring back the mystery and you stop worrying about the goal as much as the process. Well, there's, is there's, that really the answer? There's eight secrets. One of them, for example, is unquenchable yearning. You can't always get what you want. Look at the way it works in restaurants. If you go to a fast food restaurant, you order a Big Mac, it's right there. You always think the food is bad because there was no lust for it. Mm -hmm. But when you, they keep you waiting a little bit, you feel more satisfied because the yearning itself led to the deep satisfaction. Uh, here's another very important secret about erotic desire. Erotic desire is all about yeah, this pillow. Sorry, it does. Yeah, I know. This, 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 uh, could ruin pillows. a relationship. Yeah, sorry. The Jonas Brothers are screaming women. I have pillows attacking me. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, look, look at uh, the, the next one, which is... Reckless abandon. Reckless abandon, exactly. Reckless abandon is where you do some wild and crazy things that you feel so desirable so irresistible that the person who you're with, your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, they can't resist you, so they do something even crazy with you. You know, couples, married couples, we, we, well, we've sanitized our libidos. Husbands never ask their wives their deep sexual fantasies. Wives are way too inhibited or shy to, to share them. They also don't think that the weak male libido can handle it, because women are much more sexual than men. That's one of the great sexual secrets. We live in a society where we think that the husband says to his wife, how about some sex tonight, honey? And she responds, not tonight, I have a headache. And yet a man can have an ax lodged in his head. Yeah. <laughs> and he's he's always still ready, ready. Yeah. and it's still not it's not true women are men are uniorgasmic women are multiorgasmic this idea of 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 bringing out something in your spouse 
that they can't resist. It makes you feel like you're so ero- erotically electrified. And I think most women don't feel that way anymore. Mm. The biggest problem that we're facing today is depression on the part of wives in marriages because they don't feel desirable. One out of three American women is on an antidepressant, Prozac, Zoloft, Paxil. We can combat that if women were, were made to feel like they're desirable, not through cosmetic procedures, but just the way they are. There you go. So you can only read little bits of this book at a time because you don't want to, you know, you want to... You right. Want to overload. Sustain the keep the mystery the right. long yeah. answer. Right. We get it. This is all this is all power of suggestion. Right, yeah. I hope okay. the people are conjuring up all kinds of images while we were speaking. All right, Rabbit. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. You. <laughs>